When I was 14 years old, I started a YouTube channel. It was something fun, it was just something playful. I think I started it around 12 a.m. with a friend at his house, and we found some cool ringtones on the internet, and we did a top 10 ringtones video, and we added links in the description to download each one, and we ranked them. Some of them were funny, some of them were cool, some of them were awesome, and we uploaded the video video, I think it was either 3 or 4 a.m. and completely forgot about it. Three months later, my friend says, hey, what's going on with the video? I check it out and the video has over 1 million views. Now we're talking about 2009, I think. Um, so YouTube is very new. We're not aware of how YouTube works. We're just happy that it has 1 million views and we move on with our lives. Now sometime later, my dad asks me if I want to invest more into my channel. And I say, yeah, what, what the hell, let's try. And I start uploading lyric videos. Now lyric videos are videos where instead of seeing like the music video, there there's lyrics running on the screen with the uh, lyrics that the artist is currently singing. Wasn't that hard to make, but I think as a kid who knows nothing about editing using Windows Movie Maker, every video took like one or two hours, so it, there was some effort put into it. But I started making these four songs from bands that I liked, like Breaking Benjamin, Rise Against, Rock, Hard Rock, the things I listened to when I was on 10th grade. And I uploaded them to my channel, and I think it was completely for fun. I did it to pass the time, I did it because I enjoyed it. I never thought anything of it. One year later, I go back to my channel and oh my god, every video has between 100,000 and 2 million views and the ringtone video now has 5 million views and the channel has over, I think it was around 25,000 subs. It was the number two most viewed channel on Israel and it was Beating artists, like mainstream artists on YouTube, I had more views than that on my channel. Not only that, I look at the inbox and I see some messages from some guy offering to pay $20 for every month that my videos have an ad on them. And it's not even something super intrusive, it's just like, you remember the annotations? So you just ask to have an annotation at the end of the video, if you wanna buy, I think it was marketing counseling, click here. That's it. For context, my parents were super old fashioned and they never allowed me to pay on anything on the internet. So being able to open a PayPal and have some money on it and being able to pay for things and games that I like playing like MapleStory and RuneScape was something that I found magical. So I obviously immediately accepted. And I think I did it for about three or four months. I got the dough. I got like 80 bucks for the whole four months and I was super happy with it. And I continued continued uploading videos, but now I looked at it as something that's more of a business thing because I started making money off it. So I looked at how I can improve my video. So I had two ideas. The first one was that I should start making lyric videos for something that's more mainstream than the bands that I'm currently making videos for. Instead of Breaking Benjamin, maybe I can do like Katy Perry or Fall Out Boys, something that has a bigger following. The second great idea I had was download the original music video and instead of adding my lyrics on the screen, just have it as subtitles for the video. On paper, this seemed like an improvement because it's instead of watching, you know, it was a blue background, instead of having this blue background, you see the original uh, music video. So if you're here for the music video or for the music, which was what I assume people would come for, you can just see it and have the lyrics on the bottom if you're still interested. And obviously covering more popular songs would bring new audience to the channel. So I started doing that. I did that for like three or four songs and the views tanked from having 250K views in like a month, it would get anywhere between 500 and 5,000 views. And I was very worried. I thought that this was a sign that the channel is dying and no one's interested in it anymore and it doesn't work. Around the same time that these thoughts started appearing, the guy who advertised um, approached me and said, I can't afford the ads anymore because they're costing me so much month over month. I have a different proposition. What if I just buy your channel? Now think about it. I'm a kid in like 10th grade 
I just started making money off YouTube and my channel is dying and this guy's offering to buy it. In my head, I'm like, what a sucker. He doesn't know the channel is dying. I'll take the money and run. Now, before I say how much I sold it for, I want to explain the product mistakes I made that helped my channel die. The first one was that the lyrics, which were the most important aspect of the video, you know, maybe except for the music, were now shoved down to the bottom of the video and you cannot see it anymore in a way that puts the lyrics as, you know, the most important part. Second is I betrayed my audience in a way because all the people came for me for hard rock songs and now they're getting Katy Perry. And I even remember one person commented, up until a moment ago, you uploaded Breaking Benjamin. Now I'm getting Katy Perry, what the hell? And the third mistake I made was that I did not understand what my customers, quote unquote, or my viewers were coming for. The value that they were getting out of the video was probably doing karaoke. And this is something I understand now. Lyric videos where the lyrics is running on screen is best used when you want to sing along with a song or you're at a karaoke or something and you need a way to hear the song and see the lyrics. When I put it on the back of a music video where things are running all the time, and the lyrics is much, much smaller, you cannot do that anymore. So even though on paper, the videos were better, they were essentially no longer usable for the reason they were created to be used by the customers. So me not understanding how my customers use my product led me to kill my own channel. Going back to the guy, he offered to pay $100. Now to me, I thought $100 was a lot of money, but I haggled. I offered him $200 counter offer and we settled on $180 and I sold my channel for a grand total of $180. If you look at any calculator of YouTube views, the channel would have probably netted me around 20K a year if it had the same numbers. Obviously now with copyright laws, I don't think this concept could really exist in today's YouTube, but it would have still been a very big channel that I could probably pivot towards something else and that could have netted me something. But I think the moral of the story is that being, I won't say being a product manager, but when you have a product, it is so important to understand what your customers use it for and not what you made it for. Because remember, I found way more success than what I initially anticipated. Getting millions of views for a lyric video is not something that I thought about when I created the channel and you know, I found this niche that customers were happy with. They were signaling me that, yes, we want this product that you have, just not for what you created it for. As long as you allow us to do that, we'll keep coming back and watching your videos. And, and the fact that I did not understand what they were using it for made me think as though the channel was dying where I was killing it with the new way I make my videos. And yeah, I sold an incredibly successful YouTube channel for $180 back in 2010 or 2011 because it didn't understand the value of what I had and also I did not understand what made my videos popular. That's it for this week's Product Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.